So I just started the mini skid steer for the first time after rebuilding the drive motors, uh, specifically replacing the shaft seals, and they no longer leak, which is fantastic news. Now it's time to put on the new sprockets. This is what it's going to look like. So uh, Vermeer no longer uses single piece sprockets on these mini skid gears. They use a two piece, which I think makes a fair amount of sense because then you can replace the outer ring, you know, where the actual teeth are without having to pull the hub off of the motor. So these two things get bolted together. Um, but first I'm going to go ahead and kind of dry fit the hub onto the motor. These are tapered shafts, so this will only go on one way. You want to make sure that this is clean, and in my case I need to do a little bit of cleaning on both the key and the keyway to get them together. Give my key just a few little taps after cleaning it up. That uh, rust stopper helped it slide on more easily. So the next step is to put the outer sprocket on and it is held on by what looks like nine bolts. And you can put this on two different ways depending on whether you have wide tracks or narrow tracks. I have the wide tracks on. So I am going to put it uh, dish out. And then we are going to follow the instructions and install these nine bolts with some red thread locker, high strength thread locker, and torque them down to 50 foot pounds. So we'll just take our fine thread bolts, put a dab of red thread locker on them, and run them in. Now I will torque them to 50 foot-pounds. So all of these have been torqued down and the tapered hub is most of the way on the tapered shaft. There's just a little bit further that it has to go. And to get it that last little bit, uh, that's where this nut comes in. This gets torqued down to 350 foot-pounds, so it is uh, a significant nut <laughs> with significant torque. We don't want to just spin the hydraulic motor with 350 foot-pounds. So when we go to apply 350 foot-pounds, we're going to break the sprocket or shore it up so that it cannot spin. This is the original castle nut that we took off of this motor, so we're definitely going to reuse that. Um, this was the washer behind the castle nut originally, and this washer came with the sprocket kit. Um, so it, it seems like Vermeer wants you to use this, they say, if needed. Um, but the thing is, is that it is pretty oversized. So I'm not really sure exactly where this is supposed to go. Um, but they say use it if needed, and I'm going to say it's not needed. So I'm going to actually reuse the old washer, which is a much better fit. Right on our castle nut. Even just threading it on by hand, you can see that I'm, I'm pushing the sprocket on further. And there, I think it bottomed out. Well, maybe went a little bit more. So now uh, we are ready to torque this down to, and I stand corrected, it is 332 foot-pounds. Only 332 foot-pounds. I don't really want to go through the the strain of torquing something down by hand to 300 foot, 350 foot-pounds. So I need a, a larger tool, and I'm still going to use actually the same torque wrench that I was before with the aid of a device that looks like this. So this, uh, this may look like a large ratchet uh, because it, it sort of is, but really it's a gearbox. So this is um, what's called a torque multiplier. 
So this is one form of a torque multiplier. And it's basically a gear reduction. So as you spin this side, you can see the other side is also spinning, but it spins more slowly. In this case, it's about a 5 to 1, or 5.25 to 1 when I counted. So what that means is that uh, we will be able to apply a, a low torque, or whatever torque we apply on this side gets actually multiplied uh, on the output side. So uh, in this case, we need to torque these down to 350 foot-pounds, and according to the tag on this, to get it to 350 foot-pounds, we need to set our torque wrench to about 72 foot-pounds. So that's, that's a big difference. So this really should be an easy job uh, with the aid of this torque multiplier. Um, it does have a stack of sockets and adapters on it. Uh, that's, this is a really large tool, so uh, it just takes a few, a few components to adapt it down to the sizes that it needs. So I'm going to be using a half-inch drive uh, torque wrench, and in this case for the drive sprocket here, uh, I'm going to be using a 1 and 7 16 socket. Uh, the, the instructions that came with the new sprocket say 300 and 32 foot-pounds, that bottom line right there. So I'm going to adjust down our torque wrench slightly, and then we need to support this up in the air like, like, like so. So I'm going to get uh, some wood, I think, to hold this up. Try to keep everything as straight as possible so we get true torque being transmitted. Okay, well, I guess, I guess that's it. So again, I mean, that was, that was very little effort on my part. Uh, a little bit of a snag, the cotter pin holes on the castle nut uh, are not lining up, so I actually need to torque this nut down just a little bit further so that I can get the cotter pin in. There we go. I think I'll be able to get the cutter, cutter pin in now. Here we go. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Time to do the same thing on the other side. When I put the track tensioning bolt weldment back in, uh, there were two changes that I needed to make to it. One, I added a washer that was missing. So that orange looking layer right there, that's actually a washer that Vermeer had in the parts breakdown. Um, so that large weldment is supposed to rest against that washer and that was missing. So I added that washer and I greased the whole thing up. You can see there's grease on the screw, there's grease on the washer, there's grease in between those parts and in between the washer and the undercarriage weldment. And then uh, on the back where the hex sticks out, it was missing this snap ring. So there's a snap ring groove right there and the snap ring will go in it. And so I'm going to do that now and that just makes sure that that bolt essentially can't uh, fall out or push out or bounce out. So it's just to hold it in place. And it really helps to have a good set of snap ring pliers. I'm really enjoying this uh, locking pair that I got. So they, they ratchet and lock. So I got that most of the way on, but you can see the snap ring is not fully seated in the groove. 
So now I'm going to take a pry bar and push it down into the groove. And there we go. The snap ring is in place. And to double check our work, we can just spin it around. And it looks like it's in the groove all the way around. So now this is all the more that this should be able to wiggle. To finish installing the track tensioner, we need to put the spring back on the threaded stud. And then the tensioner yoke. And then the front idler goes in the end of the yoke. So then that sits in the front yoke like that. Now the track will compress that spring uh, once we have the track on and extend the tensioner out. So to, to get the track back on, um, I'm going to need to retract this as much as possible. And this takes an inch and an eighth socket. Okay, so that is all the way in. And it's basically flush with the front of the undercarriage frame. And before I torque any of these down, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side of the mini skid steer looking just like this. I'm going to go ahead and start torquing things down. I'm going to start with the smallest fasteners, which are these 5 8 bolts that are holding the triple rollers on. So there's five on each side, and they each need to be torqued down to 190 foot pounds. There are lock nuts on the back that I need to hold, and I'm going to hold the lock nuts with the 15 16 wrench here. On the front side, I'm going to snug them up with an impact and then finally torque them down with my old snap-on torque wrench. So I'm going to prop this wrench on the back side on the lock nut um, so that I can just ignore it and totally focus on, on torquing this. Um, the thing you want to be careful of with doing that, in other words, like wedging this wrench against something, is that you have to be able to unwedge it when you're done because there's going to be a lot of torque on it. Okay, so my wrench is now... Uh, under on the underside and it is not touching the ground. It's laying on that wooden wedge and After I get this torqued down um, I'll just kick the wooden wedge out from under the wrench and I'll be able to remove the wrench without any pressure on it Okay, so <laughs> if you can see that basically as soon as I picked my other foot up off the ground it clicked um, So I like to get two clicks. So I'm gonna do that one more time. There we go. So now that is torqued down, and I'm going to kick the wooden block out from under the wrench. And there's a wrench. So uh, now I'm going to do that nine more times. So cue time lapse. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. With all of the triple rollers torqued down, we are done with the small fasteners and on to the rear idlers down here, which need to be torqued to about 340 to 350 foot-pounds. I got this bolt snugged up with uh, my small impact and I have a wrench on the backside uh, wedged on a, a piece of wood like before. And now we are ready to torque this down. I have my torque wrench set to 72 foot-pounds because that is what we should need according to the chart on the torque wrench or on the amp uh, torque multiplier. That felt a little funny. Okay. In case you're wondering, this uh, this really is not under under any bind or pressure. 
because it's just a just a gearbox, uh, you know. So as soon as you take the load off of it from the torque wrench, um, it basically relaxes. Now the wrench on, on the back side, uh, that is definitely under some, some tension. So I'm going to knock the wooden block out from under it like before. Here we go. So now everything is back on the mini skid steer. We have new sprockets left and right, new triple rollers on this side, uh, one rebuilt roller on the other side. The rest are still good. The idlers were still good. So now we are ready to put the tracks back on. Oh wait, what is that? One more bolt? A big bolt? Hmm, we better take a look at this. Oh yes, how could I forget? The right hand undercarriage bolt on the front of the machine. So this is the bolt that holds the whole undercarriage to the frame of the machine. And when I was taking everything apart, I realized that it was totally loose. So I just pulled it out by hand. And this is a one inch bolt. And this is supposed to be torqued to um, like 800 foot pounds. I did have the foresight of buying a new one. So at least I don't have to use the old crusty bolt. I'll reuse the washer and get this in there. Problem is, is that there's not enough room, I don't think, for that torque multiplier. It's basically in line with the floor pan of the machine. And so uh, you can't really get any huge headed tool on it, but I'm gonna try cleaning up the hole and we'll go from there. Okay, so I got the hole cleaned out to where now I can get the new bolts in all of the way with a ratchet. And it seems like it should tighten up fine. The question is, is how am I going to tighten this up? I can really only get a ratchet on the underside. It does not even seem like I can get an impact. I'm going to have to think about this one.